you're just using droppers or straws as our divers, then soda bottles are fine. But I want to make something a little bit larger, and for that we're going to need bigger containers. So let's go take a look. Now here we have some containers that are going to let us make much larger divers. Now a couple of them are specialized, but I have some glass jars and plastic bottles, and I'm going to show you how to adapt them so that you can try these yourself. Now bigger containers means there's all sorts of possibilities for divers. We're going to try this soda bottle as a diver, see how that works. And I have this silver Christmas tree ornament. It's hollow, glass, and it's got a weight hanging down from the bottom. There's all sorts of plastic squeeze toys you can try. I cut a small hole in the bottom of this one, and I can add some weights to it as ballast. In this case, I'm going to use a couple pennies. Here's a plastic bear jar that honey comes in. Put a couple holes in the bottom and some stones for ballast. Then I'll put the cap on. This would work well. And then also I have this plastic rat. I glued a nut into the bottom of it and we'll try this and see how this one works. So here's some of the divers that we could use. Let's go check out the bottles. Now it's easiest to start with some plastic bottles that have tight fitting caps that will give us an airtight seal. We'll start with this one and into it I want to put this rubber frog. So first I want to check him to make sure that he's just barely floating. I'll adjust him here. That looks good. Now let's put him in that container. There we go. Squeeze the jar. Down he goes. Release it and back up. I found that the big plastic jars don't seal very well with the caps, so we're going to take a few rubber bands and put it over the threads. And I'm going to use a plastic bag to complete the seal. So I'm simply going to cut this bag in half. Here we go. And let's put our diver in. It just barely floats. Now I'm simply going to put this bag over the top of it. There we go. And then I'm going to take several more rubber bands and put over top of that just to create a good seal. It's better to have too many than not enough, otherwise it will leak. Now we're ready to give it a try. Push down on the bag. That's going to increase the pressure inside. And down the diver goes. When I release it, the pressure inside decreases and the diver comes back up again. Now once again we can try that same idea with this glass bottle. I have a diver inside, I have a few rubber bands on the glass bottle, the bag, and then several rubber bands over top. Push down on the bag and Mickey dies. Release it and he comes back up again. Next we'll try that silver glass ball ornament. As you can see it has a weight on the bottom of it. Once again when I push down on the plastic, it dives, and I release it, it goes back up. This is my largest container. It holds about five gallons of water, and today I'm going to use this soda bottle as my diver. I'll turn it upside down, and that should be just about right. Now for the top of this, I made a cap out of styrofoam, and when I apply pressure to this through this hose, it exerts so much pressure, it pops it off, so I'm going to use tape to hold it down. Now I could blow through the hose and let's see what happens. It dives and if I release it, <laughs> it doesn't come up. So I have to uh, decrease the pressure a little bit. I'll suck in on it. There it goes. Now I can control this with a bottle by simply attaching it to this side, squeezing it. Down it goes, and releasing it, and it comes back up again. Now it's time to try the rubber rat. This nut keeps him centered so that the bottom is down. I'm going to adjust the water so he just barely floats. 
put the top on, squeeze the bottle, and down he goes. Release the bottle, and he should start coming up. There he goes. And there's our rat diver. Now, if you come along narrow plastic containers, in this case, it's very hard. So I'm going to have to add a stopper to the top and a remote control. Let me put my diver in here. Now, it's okay that it sank to the bottom because I'm going to be able to adjust the pressure inside and make them come back up again. The stopper for the top has a long hose connected to it, and at the other end, there's a soda bottle. If I squeeze it, it's going to increase the pressure. But I want to be a little bit more accurate, so I'm going to replace the bottle with a syringe. That's going to allow me to be a little bit more precise in increasing and decreasing the pressure. Attach our stopper nice and tight. There we go. Now if I reduce the pressure inside, hopefully it'll come up. Ah, there it is. It came up pretty quick. And increase the pressure, and down it goes. Now, I think one of my favorite containers to make Cartesian divers in is this four foot long plastic tube that's used to protect fluorescent lights. Uh, it's actually flexible and it's open at both ends, so I'm going to need two number nine stoppers. The one stopper is solid and I'm going to put that at the bottom. Now, just to make sure that it doesn't pop off when I'm squeezing this, I'm going to use some duct tape just to hold it a little bit more securely. Now I'll go put some water in this. Our next step is to add the diver. And the other stopper, which I said has a hole in it, goes on the top. Now to use this, I have to put my finger over the hole and squeeze. And the diver goes down. And if I release it, it doesn't come back up again. So to get them to come back up, I'm going to take my finger off, squeeze the container, and then put my finger on top again. That's going to decrease the pressure inside, and hopefully, there it comes. The reason these divers aren't coming back up to the surface is because of hydrostatic pressure. The deeper they dive, the greater the pressure exerted by the water due to its weight. That's why in some of these, we have to find a way to decrease the pressure in order to get it back up to the surface.